malungil tu tau on marbek la ada lo bangke dar tial program lagi dar ato tau ato tau togo era ureor doing business in Palau. I am very pleased and honored this morning to have a very special guest with us, Director Levit. Uh, he uh, finally made a little bit of time to be with us this morning, and I'm very grateful for that. And I thank uh, Omdas Ueki for uh, driving him over. It's not easy to find where Dorior is, you know, but uh, I'm really glad that they made it. And so before we start this wonderful conversation, Director Levit, um, I ask for your permission that I read one verse from the Bible, and that just came up. It may be pertaining to you, to each of us. And so it's a, it's a blessing. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And uh, this uh, verse is so special. In fact, I don't know, it just came up and it's meant to be for today. Uh, when we had the inauguration of our new administration, there was a very special song that was sang by uh, the students, uh, a group of students who sang this song, and it was based on this verse. If we turn away from our wicked ways, God will hear us from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. It was a very important song for the start of our new administration in Palau because as we all know, uh, the new administration came on board taking on COVID. The COVID pandemic was like, here, deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so this was a, a really beautiful song. It was based on this verse. And I didn't choose this verse, it just came up and I think it was very, uh, very appropriate for this morning, for, for you, for all of us. So, Aktimo Oidil Tokor Belao, Tial verse at the beginning of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Et Tiang Maldio Ay Salwase, Al Sogumar Atak, Al Lobang Klek, A Mongario Arandir, Emululu, E Osi Karamatak, E Mooroi Dragel Makngit, El Blagratal, Langarangi, E Naka Morong Strir, Rayang at Mermerio, E Mo Subesak Kantarir, E Mo Omkungir at Tial Balurir. Mukomal masaul lo bangkit, elang yung kita mo mo lertial malungil al at at kita ma director Levit. Makmamalgot ko ra Amerika, nal baby lakuk mamalgot ko ra Belau. So okay, so thank you for your patience. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, I would start this conversation by allowing this platform of Total Program as an avenue for the people of Palau both the communities from the grassroots all the way to leadership uh, to have a chance to really get to know you as a person. But before we start, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being willing. As a foreigner, you are willing to take your time and uh, provide your expertise and your efforts to help this little, small, developing island nation of Palau. I really want to thank you for that and for the opportunity that we could uh, get to know you better. So you can start with letting us know where were you born? You have <laughs> siblings, you know, uh, sure. so people get to know you as a, on a personal level. Well, uh, <clears throat> your, for your whole name, you should state it yes. for those who have not met you. Yes, my name is uh, Kerry Levite. I'm from uh, Massachusetts. I came from a small town. Uh, all my neighbors uh, were dairy farms, horse farms, so I grew up on a farm most of my life. Uh, I joined the army after that. Uh, that was when I was 18 years old, and uh, I went overseas and didn't come back for 35 years. Wow. You went overseas, and I, I suspect uh, maybe you were like me. I married a foreigner and went overseas. Uh, my first husband was a German. He passed away in 2014. Mm -hmm. So did you go overseas to Europe? Uh, that was my first duty station. Uh, mm -hmm. It was experimental uh, cohort platoon, which means all 60 people uh, that went to basic training together and went to advanced individual training. We went to a chemical site mm -hmm. where it's going to be uh, high, high protection over there uh, because it was unclassified during that time. And wow. this was in Europe? 
this was in Europe, mm -hmm. a disclosed location. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up marrying the army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you just, you do extensions three years at a time, sometimes five years. My last one was for 10 years uh, because mm -hmm. you have the intent of staying in. And uh, all those jobs I was doing was military police related work. Oh, okay. That's really wonderful to know. I know that before we started this show, you had showed me, and so I've seen your credentials. And it's, uh, I'm really kind of uh, pleased to know that you were based in Europe because it's a, uh, Europe can teach us a lot of things here in Palau. I myself have learned a lot uh, from Germany, uh, having been married and lived there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know that you probably have had your life spent a f quite a few number of years in Germany. Yes. Yeah. We have that in common. You know, my daughter's half German. Do you speak ein bisschen Deutsch? Ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Omdas, we want to teach him a little Palawan. It'll be like me. I'll be speaking Palawan, English, and German. And that's wonderful. You know, the more uh, languages we speak, the more uh, diplomatic ties we could make. It's, it's a way better. of accepting your culture, yes. Very Such nice. the pretty flowers I'm wearing. Yes, thank <laughs> you for uh, wearing a lei. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Palawan tradition, and it just kind of, uh, this one is called the Marmar, and this is really from Micronesia, from Yap, mm -hmm. Uliti. Leis are more from Palau. But, you know, we wanna, we're part of a global, you know, world right now, and we want to embrace everyone's culture. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really pleased uh, to know that you were born around also a, a farming community, mm -hmm. because that's one of the things that uh, we, we believe Palau has a lot of potential for food security systems mm -hmm. to grow their own food. I've seen it, yes. Yeah, and so uh, you've been in Palau now since... Uh, April 17th. April 17th, so a few months. Have you had a chance to kind of travel around to the other states? I've had three days off. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been up to Melikilk, mm -hmm. uh, just observed the area up there. We have substations on the island. I drive by, I see how things are going, and I like to talk to the locals mm -hmm. to see uh, what uh, they want me to emphasize on law enforcement. Very good. And I know, um, Mr. Levit, you just landed running, you know, because we needed you. Yes. We needed a director and we needed someone we can trust and someone who can do the job. And, uh, but before we get to your expertise, do you have any uh, siblings or oh. any family? Who yes, I have uh, uh, seven brothers and sisters. Uh, they were, at the time I left, all living together in the same house. Uh, but as the years go by, they get married, they move to different states mm -hmm. in America, and they, they go on from there. <clears throat> and the reason why I joined the Army, I didn't tell you, because my father is a, a policeman, he's retired now. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make him proud, and I was too young to, to be a police officer, so uh, I joined the Army. I signed up mm -hmm. when I was 17 to get in when I was 18 mm -hmm. uh, to be a military policeman. And it's a great way to get trained, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, wow, you have, you're one of seven. Yes. So you're not uh, an only child, spoiled brat, that you know. <laughs> no, uh, I was. I was the second oldest, and yeah. uh, my brother uh, he did everything opposite of me. So yeah. I joined the military, and I went government service afterwards because that's what my mother was doing. Mm -hmm. And father and mother were always talking about retirement, so I found a way to get two retirements mm -hmm. when I was only fifty-two years old. Oh, that's smart. So, and that's why I'm working here now. I have yes. the time, time to help you. My brother did everything opposite, like I said, so he went to uh, corrections mm -hmm. and then police officer and then federal marshal while he was doing reserve time. So mm -hmm. when I visited him, uh, I, I traveled from Texas to Alaska uh, last year. I stopped by Massachusetts on, on the way back home and uh, he's bragging about his retirement. I said, <laughs> about time, and he's waiting for his second retirement. He was bragging to me. I said, well, I've had mine for seven years. <laughs> Yeah, he was a little jealous about that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, being born and raised in a family that is, uh, you know, you had, there's a lot of siblings and uh, growing up in a town, a small town, uh, I think you fit in right here in Palau. Most of our families here in Palau, we come from big families. And of course, they grow into clans, yes, <laughs> you know, yes, yes. Uh, and it is a small town too. And so we kind of know one another. And so sometimes, uh, you know, in a small community, sometimes my father would say, don't be a crap. Don't have crap mentality. Crap. Don't be a crap in a bucket of craps. 
<laughs> it's called crap mentality. When you're living in a small town, there's always going to be someone who's going to try to bring you down. So what we do is we learn to appreciate the blessings we have every day. And we learn to appreciate the people for who they are. And uh, I can uh, already tell that growing up in a big family, you have a big heart. You know that you must share resources and you know that you must help one another. It's not like a, you know, dog eat dog or just kind of a, you know, it's a, you have a healthy way of, uh, of growing up knowing that the world doesn't revolve around just you. Exactly. And that is very important. So I think choosing to come to Palau is being of service. How did you, uh, you know, were you inspired or well, were you recommended? How did you say yes? First of all, I was tricked into coming here. <laughs> I was told I was going to be hired as an advisor. <clears throat> but uh, as people were going through my credentials and looking uh, what I've done, I mean. And uh, knowing what we need. Building houses, cars, computers, military police, uh, the nuclear sites I worked at, the chemical sites, the investigation, military police investigation, working at the Provost Marshal's office, uh, training dogs, drug dogs, mine dogs, mm -hmm. uh, the deployments I went on, and then I didn't even start telling you what I've done in the government afterwards. But coming here, I fit so many positions mm -hmm. that uh, the president wanted me to be a director. I'm like, okay, I'm here to help. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how much work that was going to be, but yeah. it, it, it's been fun. Like I said, you hit the ground running. We I had to. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. And, uh, you know, uh, Das is a special assistant of the president, so he knows the open plate of pending items and the, the things that we as a country, as a small island developing nation, lack and need. Yeah, so I, I thank him for also coming and being with us on this uh, conversation. Well, he's one of the first persons I met and worked with and yeah. without him I wouldn't be able to get as far as I have in three mm -hmm. months. Well I just kind of wanted to clarify mm -hmm. to your audience why they're probably wondering why I'm sitting here with you and Director <laughs> he's Kerry. He's my driver. Mm -hmm. I'm, <laughs> technically I'm assigned to really bridge the gap when yes. Director Kerry was moving um, on island, really try to bridge the cultural understanding gaps, maybe see, give him a, maybe a big picture mm -hmm. idea of uh, what we're facing. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Currently, my task is really to assist him and to give him all the tools and assistance that he needs to succeed in, in, in creating our public safety to mm -hmm. be the public safety that the entire community desires, mm -hmm. wants, and needs, especially a developing uh, country. So, mm -hmm. yes, that is my role in case anybody was wrong. I'm just mm -hmm. here to assist him. Thank yes. you, Das. Mal masawla om Das ang kaul mo abang kal adal me at iregal lingi ako ko wajal bilal asay na lingi lolo ng asaw ra director Levit al guk mo matangali al selbela mo o matangali masing ngral lureor ma pasyo ma ikel guk integrate lingi mo ra al sel tial al guk culture regit. And what a what a I don't know anyone better than him to do that. He, like me, is married to a foreigner, and we know both sides mm -hmm. of the cultures. So I'm very uh, actually proud of uh, Omdaswa for, uh, you know, saying yes and allowing himself to, you know, help you out, take you around, and, uh, and show you the places and what Palau is about. Yeah. Well, it was a big place when I first got here, mm -hmm. and uh, I was staying at the West Plaza, and I didn't know how to get to work. So yeah. every, I was being picked up at 7 o'clock every day saying I need to get to work. And uh, I didn't realize it was right across the street. And we have no addresses. So, of course, it's exactly. like uh, you go drive past a couple of coconut trees. You see a house that's blue. Uh, you know, we don't have addresses. It's kind of fun, you know, to see a, a foreigner um, being integrated into the community. And so far, I can see you smiling. You've accepted the fact that there's not everything here. You know, you come from a big mainland. There's all the food, all the, you know, there's everything. And here it's a small island. Sometimes uh, we have power outages. You know, not everything is available. And uh, you seem to have, you know, kind of adjusted. Well, if you want to live in areas where there's shopping outlets and malls and Costco stores, the Walmarts, uh, those places are great to go to, but no one says hello. They just walk right past you. Here, everywhere I go, it's Tutau. Oh, How are you doing? Sulan, Swelba. So uh, I like that better. So I really don't care about all those things I should be missing. 
I'm so happy that you can speak a little Palawan. Namo sa Bella Director Levito Luase ng il 2000, il 12, ko ang arang, mesulang. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm very happy when I'm in a, a different country. I also, you know, I'm so happy to be able to learn a few words. German was not easy to learn for me. Yeah. <laughs> it was It's... my uh, mother-in-law who didn't speak a word of English. It's just kind of like you fall in there and you start to learn and and uh it's a blessing it took me a while that's yes <laughs> yeah and so um <clears throat> i understand that you know the states europe a lot uh have you uh lived in any other uh islands or other countries besides mainland and europe hawaii oh well then you know a little bit the island the uh, climate is easy to adjust to yeah. and uh, how about the food Have you learned seen, a little bit about tapioca or taro? <laughs> I, I've seen the tree. I don't know what that tastes like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I am gonna task on that. You yeah. know, and next uh, next time you go around town, maybe stop by Yano's Market and, of course. and uh, get him some taro so he can go check it out at home. You can go home we, and see how it tastes like. Oh, I've been sampling the food at the park that we have here, the pavilions. The, the, the Edward Market, yeah, Edward oh, Park, Park. Oh, yeah. yeah, you go on Thursday mornings when they have the market, yes. farmers market. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's different. You prepare food a lot different here. Yeah. And there's not those big heavy sauces like they do in Texas. Everything's got barbecue <laughs> or hot sauce on it. Yeah. But uh, the dried fish, uh, the the the. the Kimbap, I don't know how you say it in Korean. Yeah. All those different kinds of food. I, I love grabbing that uh, because yeah. I, it's right outside my office. Right, so you can just walk over and get a little bit of a snack. Right. That's wonderful. I love that. You know, uh, Palau has, uh, right now, as I look into the future, Palau, after COVID, we have tourism is always our number one economic driver, but mm -hmm. we, we must not only depend on tourism, we must also diversify. That if in case there's another pandemic or something that we could you know, uh, have a, a domestic economy. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this program. The is everyone who does something or have a passion or an expertise is very valuable in this community. And so let's move to your expertise. I know that you've been, uh, ever since you arrived, uh, you've been heading the Bureau of Public Safety. And uh, for a healthy uh, developing country, that is uh, probably the most important uh, part of uh, a developing country is law and order mm -hmm. safety of its citizens. Mm -hmm. And so um, could you give me a little bit of a, what was your first impression when you came and you saw <clears throat> how our law and order or public safety at um, the condition it was? It was in disarray. Uh, there's a shared responsibility and that means there's no accountability. So the one thing I wanted to do is find out who's working where and why. What are the qualifications? How did they, did they get that position? Why is there a police officer working at the fire department? Um, vice versa, people are, were traded left and right because there's nepotism here. Yes. And uh, you find out that uh, in one division, three people are all related. So I put a stop to all of that and I created a rotation policy right now. And I was breaking up the groups. And it, I was met with a lot of resistance, but with help from uh, Omdas mm -hmm. and uh, Valerie, Pua, the, the people I work with, mm -hmm. they were helping me to identify who the families were. Mm -hmm. And it explained a lot when I ran into obstacles. Um, and this is all, if you ask me, COVID related because people mm -hmm. got in their comfort zones. Yes. They were getting paid for staying home. They're getting paid to do uh, 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 remote work, mm -hmm. sitting at home, uh, dialing in, sending off the emails and stuff. And when you finally had to make them put on a uniform and go to work again, they were fighting me. I agree with you. Yeah. COVID has a lot to do with that social and economic impacts of work. So that's the mm -hmm. first thing in uh, holding uh, leadership responsible mm -hmm. and to provide them the resources so they could uh, find out w uh, what their people are doing, w what, are the, what are the shortcomings. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough computer equipment, they don't have a printer, uh, they need vehicles, fuel, whatever. I, I looked into every detail. Very good. And uh, you men mentioned something that uh, you, of course, uh, had some help with uh, Val and, and thus to Uh, explain who's related to who, that we find to be the number one problem 
and uh, not only in the Ministry of Justice, but in most of our ministries and, and agencies, it's nepotism. Nepotism is just one form of corruption. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very difficult in a small community in Palau because we're all interrelated either by blood, marriage, or adoption, or so forth. But there's got to be a line you draw between being professional and being personal. And so I really, again, I want to say thank you. I really appreciate the fact that you have no relatives. <laughs> to f that's the first thing. You have no relatives so that you see things objectively and that your expertise is expressed in a professional manner. There's no personal like, oh, uh, you know, my nephew or my niece or. Well, I, I took an oath and I hang it up in, in my office behind mm -hmm. my desk. So that's what I'm enforcing. Mm -hmm. I took the oath, I swore to it, I'll abide by it. And I'm also a law enforcement officer. That means I enforce the laws. Mm -hmm. I don't make the laws. That doesn't mean I have to like them or not. Mm -hmm. I just enforce them. And everyone that took that oath to be a law enforcement officer, they will do it. If I catch them not doing their job, I'm done with them. Well, I'm, I must tell you, I must share with you that I have spoken with a few of the people who are on the ground, police officers, people who work in the jail, people who work with uh, canine dogs and narcotics. And uh, I'm like, hey, how are things? You know, how are things now that we have a, a director uh, in place and we're not like looking at the Bureau of Public Safety as being handicapped? Everyone that I've spoken to have said to me, things are better. Things are progressing. We're getting an opportunity to be trained. We're, I feel like I'm actually appreciated for what I do. And this is coming from like police officers who may not have been, it doesn't matter whether you're related to someone uh, and you're there or not. People want to know, feel and know that what they're doing is is actually worth their time getting up in the morning, putting on the uniform. And not only that, they need a leader who actually notices that and encourages them. And if they're lacking, train them. Let's talk about training. Sure. I, I've heard so many good things that you've uh, been doing, but I wanted to hear from you. I want the people to know. Okay, <laughs> I got seven different divisions, so I've been yeah. involved in every one of them. Okay. Um, to back up your uh, recognition of hard workers, those are the people I promote. It's not family, it's not relatives, it's not favors. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have the P1s, P3s, sergeants, everyone. They get selected based upon their performance, So, which is why I have a rotation policy. And if someone excels at being an investigator, we'll mm -hmm. keep them there. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. You're going to be uh, promoted by work ethic. Yes, work yeah. ethic. I love that. Work ethic, that's the number one. It's all about this program. and. Yes. You know, Director Levit Palau, in our very own culture, we actually are uh, descendants of a, a heritage of at least 3,000 years. And work ethic, uh, Das knows also from his parents, grandparents, I know from my parents, grandparents, work ethic was the number one thing. You be honest and you do your work. Every day, everybody has something to do work ethic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for promoting that even more I and encouraging that it. even more <laughs> in the Bureau of Public Safety. Sure. So besides uh, training, um, have you looked into uh, maybe a backlog of work? Like for example, I know there are so many vehicles in all of Palau that, that are not registered. Or, you know, they just like get away with it. They were like, why should we register our car? You know, they think it's like, hey, it's Palau. But I have heard one person say that if they count it, the number of vehicles that are unregistered in Palau, if the Bureau of Public Safety were to collect on those, it's at least six million. Registrations plus licenses plus, is that kind of a, I don't know the exact amount, but I've just heard that. Well, we're not in a profit-making business, but uh, to enforce safety, uh, we do find people as punishment before the ultimate punishment going to jail. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I noticed when I got here. All the plates were expired, and you don't uh, require to have insurance, so, so I'm like, why is there an excuse? Yeah. So uh, all this week, I told uh, the Bureau, uh, you'll register your vehicle, starting with your personal vehicle, and make sure all the police cars are done before you write anyone else a ticket. If you don't do that, you're going to be on walk-on patrol. So the other thing that we had going on is uh, 
Top Cop Award, and it's going to be today in about two and a half hours. Top Cop Award. Yes. Oh, that's uh, that's amazing. Reward system. Yes. So if people do good, you know, you kind of give them awards. That's really nice. I don't think we've had that in Palau before. Uh, they, Top Cup they Award. They did. They ran it for a couple a couple months, and then it kind of faded away because no one was following up on it. Yeah. So uh, I got with a traffic unit, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> she's a really good leader. Got with the police chief, and I said, uh, what tickets are we, what are we doing? Because I build databases, and yeah. the numbers just don't add up. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was getting about 20 tickets a week. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what if we do an award by who writes the most? Mm -hmm. No harassing tickets, honest tickets, the license yes. plates, tinted windows, no yes. seat belts. And uh, now she's averaging 40 a week. Those are all safety. And, That's and good. I increased 40. 40. 40 a week. It's still going up. <laughs> Very good. And that's what I call law and order. You know, it's, uh, it's safety and then, you know, it becomes, uh, you know, when things are in order, it's really, uh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, one young man who had hit my car <laughs> and ran in, pulled in front of me once on my way to the emergency room because a cousin passed away. And he said, auntie, auntie, please don't call the police. You know, I'm going to pay you back. And, you know, and I'm on my way to the emergency room. And so I'm like training him to like, okay, you as an entrepreneur now, you have to work, pay me back in an installment basis. Mm -hmm. But it's um, situations in Palau where if people would have their cars up to date, smoke checks, registrations, there would be less of that. You know, when, when I found out that the car he was driving still belonged to a German girl who works for the museum, uh, who sold it to him for $500 three years ago, I'm like, Benina, he still didn't uh, transfer the car. Those kind of things, you know. They're little, they may seem little, but when people take them to be important and actually do things according to law, there will be more order. And you feel better about it. And you feel better about it. And, and people, uh, victims of accidents can, you know, get at least, uh, when I first moved back in 2019, Director Levitt, I called the AG's office. I'm like, so I need to get insurance because I, I own a business. I need to get insurance <clears throat> for the cars and stuff. And one of the ass assistant AG's uh, laughed. It's like, Ha <laughs> ha Irene, 70% of all the cars, you know, running around in Palau are not registered and they're not insured. There's no law. And so I said, okay, well, at least I'll get liability. <laughs> you know, I'll have mm -hmm. to take care of my own if I get, you know, the car gets damaged. But it's, those are part of law and order. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for being on top of that. Um, what do you think about this... Uh, drunk driving in Palau. I have read statistics that Islanders, Pacific Islanders especially, we cannot handle alcohol. I mean, it's very well. I, or at least you sh they shouldn't drink too much. <coughs> well, recreational product out there before you go into the legal drugs. So mm -hmm. uh, usually during payday weekends, and these are the trends we're getting from the uh, crime reports we have. I think we had 397 uh, alcohol-related accidents last year. I don't have all the numbers wow. on me right now. Yeah. But that's the top one, and then it's followed by um, the aggravated assaults, the fighting, mm -hmm. where people will grab a machete, their tempers flare. Mm -hmm. So with all the stresses of uh, cost of living, mm -hmm. inflation, and everything else, people not having jobs, they see a lot of money coming to Palau, but it's only tourists, and mm -hmm. the big hotels are making it. I feel sorry for them. Yes. But uh, we're, uh, we have the... the Division of Juvenile Justice mm -hmm. that is reaching out to the schools right now. So I'm changing the enforcement laws that we have into uh, preventions by bringing the outreach God. program to the schools so we can talk to kids about anti-vaping, mm -hmm. alcoholism, and this is the road it, it brings you to. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we're integrating uh, two officers to also work with the parole board. Mm -hmm. So the kids that we talked in high school that we warned them not to drink and drive mm -hmm. or do vape or do drugs, they can go to the jail and follow up on them. So there's a process. See, I warned you, I told mm -hmm. you, and we can get them the rehabilitation that they need mm -hmm. or the rehab uh, mm -hmm. uh, through the hospitals, religious services. It's all being tracked now. That's wonderful to know. So do you start with grade school, elementary school, or just high school at, at this point, the program? At this point, uh, we, we at the teenage level, because that's mm -hmm. when you're introduced. I mean, Correct. everyone's brought up uh, drinking milk. Mm -hmm. and glass of water when you're thirsty and then you get uh, something fancy like a Kool-Aid 
And it, then the flavors come in, then the sodas. And after that, when they're old enough, they want the next best thing. And peer pressure. Beer. Uh, yeah, whatever their peers exactly. want. Well, I think that's wonderful. Uh, it's wonderful that you have the program going into schools. Mm -hmm. um, I also am a huge believer that when, uh, when you're young and you're exposed to good programs, it, it has uh, the same or even better effect than when you're exposed to bad programs mm -hmm. or, or bad things, peer pressure. So um, let's talk about the, the canines. Uh, I, I thought it was wonderful for Palau to have uh, a resource that detect not only drugs, hard drugs, but explosives, things like that. Uh, this is something new for Palau. And of course, uh, the dogs came during uh, the time that COVID just started. Yeah, so um, I know that uh, you, I've, hear, I've heard in the community, you've also dedicated time and I'm really happy to uh, see your credentials and know that you're not only experienced with military and police work, but the work that involves also these, uh, these canines. They're very special dogs. You want to share a little bit about that? No, I like to share a lot. Oh, good. <laughs> Please do. Okay. Uh, in the military, I was a patrol dog handler. Uh, those are very aggressive dogs uh, we use for sentry work. Uh, after that, I went to narcotics, worked in narcotic dogs. Then I did bomb dogs. Then I got deployed to Bosnia during the war there to be a mine dog handler. And... Uh, after the military, I did high threat protection with uh, dogs in Iraq and Afghanistan. So God mm -hmm. has a plan for everything. So when you, add up all, that. when you add up all the things I've ever done, and I'm going through an interview, and, and the interview was bouncing around to all these different subjects. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I could do that. What do you, and the president mm -hmm. asked me, uh, I got a call through, through his office saying, uh, what can you do about the dog program? I said, well, this is what I put in place. So. I took the last inspection that we had, mm -hmm. that we failed miserably on, mm -hmm. and this is during uh, our trainer resigned, mm -hmm. and I said, well, I can train dogs. Mm -hmm. I frowned because now I have even less time, and I went out to the kennels, and uh, I uh, had Annalise out there. Uh, I made her the kennel master, and I, I held her accountable and responsible for everything mm -hmm. that happens out there. I mm -hmm. got the, the local veterinarian on a contract. She's on contract to one October. Thank God for that. Dr. Kristen Desina. And she was the only one who really knew those dogs ever mm -hmm. since they first arrived. And, Thank uh, you for doing that. I had her. I also did the budgets this year, and I, uh, I'm going to continue her through fiscal year 2024. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So looking at the facility, it's a brand new facility, but uh, there's no canine SOP, uh, standard operating procedures. So I wrote that. I went through it, and I reviewed it to make it... Uh, usable in Palau. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, American uh, U.S. state code mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't need to be applied here. Yeah, there, oh. there, there's a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to dog detection. So I had to create a, a standard for that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how big of aids can you use? Where and when can you use them? How close can you mm -hmm. use them? How many days does it take to get certified? It's mm -hmm. 22 pages and it's wow. like eight fonts, so it's really mm -hmm. tiny. So, it, but it has everything. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, I wrote it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't like to share that with the public because mm -hmm. we don't want the bad guys to know how we can do things. Right. But uh, it looks like we'll be certifying a dog handler uh, next week. Oh, that's wonderful. Just to know that you've got a set of SOPs that can be applied here in Palau, that is uh, enough for us to like know that uh, our Bureau of Public Safety takes this seriously. You may have uh, been told and seen in reports and stuff that uh, hard drugs, methamphetamine, mm -hmm. those type of drugs are a huge problem in Palau. Mm -hmm. And uh, it starts from, uh, you know, young people, who knows, tourists, who knows, you know, uh, but it is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so having these dogs as a resource and uh, thank you for uh, training them. You know, if we don't have someone who can train and actually oversee what happens with these dogs, it just breaks my heart. Well, that, you that's know, it a, breaks my heart. The, you said oversee. I say oversight. Oversight. Uh, one thing I've done with every division, I'm creating transparency and oversight. So mm -hmm. even though I'm training the dogs, mm -hmm. I can certify them, but that would be corruption at my level because, right. oh, he's good, good to go. So I wrote down all the rules that apply, so I'm stopping the training. I'm having the Army come over to do an assessment. I wrote an assessment checklist that mm -hmm. we use basically around the world when it comes to dogs. Mm -hmm. So she can verify the dog responded. She can verify mm -hmm. where the training aids were placed just to uh, do a percent on the, mm -hmm. the dog certification level. So I, I'm out of it. All I can do is hope the dogs pass mm -hmm. because I think they will. 
and that's oversight and transparency. Mm -hmm. And if she says that uh, they don't pass, then we keep the training until they do pass. That's wonderful. You know, uh, one of the things that I appreciate about Dr. Desina, uh, as a vet, is she had gone to schools also. Oh, to, a resident. Yes, yeah. to, uh, you know, talk with kids so then they can get to understand. I actually interviewed her not too long ago, and uh, I said to her, I noticed since the day you arrived and I was checking you into my apartment up to now that there's a big difference. If you look all around Palau, there's less stray dogs. There's more people who are learning to take care of their animals. Mm -hmm. She now has that animal clinic where it's also a learning center. So not only do their pets get vaccines, they, uh, and they get trained. They, they learn how to take care of their pets. Mm -hmm. And uh, knowing that she can help you take good care of the health of these canines is a huge, it's a at least 95% of Palau know that these dogs are not only expensive, they are, they're officers. They are helping to keep us in a place that is drug free. And uh, the post uh, master uh, general is also very grateful, you know, with the, the packages coming in through the mail, the dogs mm -hmm. get to smell the packages. It's, they're officers, they're part of your team. Well, yes, uh, we had, uh <clears throat> too many dogs and not enough dog handlers. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a way to uh, thwart crime here, bombs and explosives, uh, bombs mm -hmm. and narcotics, uh, we gave up uh, two dogs. They're st they still belong to me, mm -hmm. but they're training and exercising the dogs and using them for detection work. Mm -hmm. So I've worked out uh, a memorandum of understanding with the Postmaster General to allow us on the other side of customs. Mm, so there's okay. a customs wall. I can't touch people till they get off the plane and go through immigration. Mm -hmm. Then I can touch them. Mm -hmm. It's the way customs border protection works. And uh, with the mail room, we can go on the outside where the boxes are, mm -hmm. but they go to the boxes on the inside. Mm -hmm. I'm talking mailboxes, we're talking cardboard boxes. For right, customs. yeah. But uh, with oversight of them checking and me checking, there's not gonna be any corruption because mm -hmm. if we find something and you said it's safe, Mm -hmm. for explosives or mm -hmm. clear there's no narcotics and we find it then we can nail down if there's any corruption within our own law enforcement and work together you know it's amazing so the mous that you form with this uh, i can see that you're uh, you're also one of the gifts that you are um, blessed with is uh, the gift of uh, collaboration and i think that's uh, people need to know i know that since you first arrived uh, sometimes the community hears too much assumptions, <laughs> negative news, or people saying, oh, well, uh, what are his credentials? Or, you know, who is this person that you're, you know, uh, having to be our director of public safety? Instead of focusing on what do we need? Yeah. What is he blessed with? His education, his background, his gifts, his talents, that he is filling these holes of uh, lack of, of expertise that we do not have. And so I'm, I'm grateful that you're sharing because people need to know. People need to know that uh, you're actually collaborating with not only your team of uh, Ministry of Justice uh, staff, officers, you know, taking care of the dogs, collaborating also with the private sector. Mm -hmm. You know, Christine is private sector. She's not employed by the government. She's one of those young ladies I was really inspired with when I watched her take care of those dogs. I encouraged her, you need to open a clinic. I even helped her to negotiate, you know, to try and get her place because we need more entrepreneurs who are able to do something that is not available here on island and we need people like you who are able to collaborate and see a, um, a need and find solutions for it yeah so currently right now <clears throat> we have an open invoice with her and that is uh, take care of the dogs health wise yes it's hard for me to plug that in uh, because there's going to be conflict of interest if i put her on a contract with me against other companies but uh because you're supposed to put a bid out there mm -hmm. with the army the, the government army, process the army would come back in and they take the bids they would cheap, probably take the cheapest one i do a, a procurement of that and it, i didn't want that i just mm -hmm. want someone here local promise me you take care of the dogs mm -hmm. provide the oversight if something's wrong and if who's I'm, here yeah yeah it, it's I'm working island. out very well really really one of your successes and i am very proud that you are doing that i think that you're collaborating very well with the rest of the community in that sense and like i said 
every officer that I've spoken to, people who work in jail, all they've said to me is, things are getting better. Yeah. Things are progressing. We're being recognized for what we do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can feel that uh, your team, you know, they, and now you mentioned this cup award. Top, in, top in, cup. Yeah. Top cup award. Mm -hmm. And so where will you hold this? Oh, uh, it's outside the uh, Ministry of Justice. Yeah. And I believe it's going to be in a parking lot. Yeah, uh, you know, that's good to know. We can use this program to announce that today will be the very first Top Cup Award ceremony. And Director Levit and his team are going to recognize hardworking officers. No, it's, it's not just for uh, citations. Anyone can go out and write tickets on license plates. I'll, yeah. I'll write you 100 today. <laughs> uh, it has to do with performance as well. Uh, performance. Performance and appearance. If they look like a cop, act like a cop, they show up to work at time, they set the example, and they write the most tickets, that's a top cop. That's that's awesome. I have to translate that or maybe give a chance to uh, Omdas to translate that. Yeah, no, no, I'll, oh, I'll do you the honors. Oh, yeah. 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 Director Levita. Amal klo lurior at tim lelo mo ala tim lelo mo ala lurior le kita amal le pato ka amar sergi tertial bureau of public safety mkatos pa ang yasul balu mung akmalungi laro ko lau ayso sa LLC sa tamo ngarin yas ceremony tir lo lo mkatorin lo sa top cup award mung kagi to lo sa ng yakadil tirgan malu usap tiket tirgan performance or other lo ay uniform tir e on time lo lurior e ungil maru raurerir e honest lo lo masayor na balu mung tiyang mal matrangi e matrati matrangi lo sa ng Ang kaatrang angot o balung at ramirikel ang tingmal ko na laoti o sa ngungil laureo lopenget. Lang laureo lopenget at atrbelao, lome sa iyan klung yolir tirgal at laureo. E ayel ko kung lang song asertir, ako klo mastery at training, matamo ngir laureir. E malolto pa sa iyan talo sa transparency. Kiral malin sa tokoy mga kita lo ay sa lo sa Ay kan roku ilu royal loru lel kirel kuknia open trira mar atra customs atra immigration atra post mar atra belu akirel ngaringia ikai kirel tiak dilingit tanga certifying kirel kuk ngaringia arpe pirel certify osisiu mung mung ngaringi sel malins el toko rau royal el marael mal merang asulil kirel seikir I had to translate that because it's very important for the community to know that you uphold transparency and accountability and, uh, and therefore you feel like it's not right for you to be the only one certifying certain programs oh, yeah. and endeavors that you actually collaborate mm -hmm. with the other agencies including the post office, immigration and customs and that uh, you promote uh, the work to be transparent and clean and that's very important. I really want to thank you for that, Director Levy. You're welcome. Um, now let's talk about the the uh, the jail and the prison part of your work. I know that um, the vice president was asking um, the Congress for more for the budget to finish the construction mm -hmm. of the new facility. Could you share a little bit about? You know where the progress is with how we are. When we when you came, we had big problems with the jail. I mean, we've had a few escapees. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to work at sites where there was three fences with concertina wire, with sensor beds, microwaves, and everything else. So this is it's a chicken coop, if you ask me. Correct. I noticed uh, deficiencies uh, in the fencing. I've gone the right way. I went to public works. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sought funding. So I got the estimates uh, to repair the facility because I could see where they were escaping from. Mm -hmm. It's almost so, inhumane too, the way it's not properly yeah. maintained. No, I, I, I noticed that there's simple things of uh, electrical outlets, uh, uh, ceiling fans, something to keep the prisoners cool, uh, mm -hmm. checking them. Uh, I looked into every aspect. Uh, what was their mental health? Are they getting rehabilitation? Uh, what, who's eligible for a parole? Um, I'm trying to reduce the prison population, mm -hmm. but it's not out of being kind, it's who deserves it. So if mm -hmm. they're a role model, just mm -hmm. like a top cop, if they're a role model prisoner and they earn our trust again, we can do a monitoring program. We can let them go out, put them to work. So put any, them to work, so yes. So if you need a trustee that needs to come here mm -hmm. to, to help work, we just require that people uh, uh, sign, sign the prisoner out, mm -hmm. 
from, uh, I think it's eight to four, I could be wrong on that, that they, they're being monitored. They're not giving any keys. They're not giving any special treatments, mm -hmm. okay, that they're actually put to work. So it's part of our rehabilitation to encourage them mm -hmm. to go back to work. Everyone deserves a second chance. Director Levitt, thank you for uh, helping to improve that system. Everyone deserves a second chance, and especially those whom you say may be eligible for parole. Why don't we put them to work? In fact, I had a little conversation with a former Minister of Justice, Kam Sek Chin. He had, years ago, started a program called Subalek Farm. Subalek is a Palawan word that means uh, a lesson, a lesson I learned. Mm -hmm. And when you turn it around, that same word says kalabus. It means I'm imprisoned. And so he really, that was brilliant. What he did was uh, started the farm where the prisoners were out there. They were doing so well, they were feeding the hospital besides feeding yes. themselves. And um, I don't know why that program went away, but he also started another program that's called the LIP program, where juveniles get trained how to make, you know, uh, spears, how to, how to make things, archery, handicrafts, you know, yeah. handicrafts. It's not only storyboards that prisoners are able to make. These are human beings. Uh, they have also gifts and talents. And, uh, you know, we cannot, who are we to judge? You know, it's not always like they don't have a second chance to make use of their life yes. and their energy and their strength. I, I, I get so many requests about that, but uh, kind heart or not, the judge already judged him. I'm not Correct. judging him anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just treating him as humanely as possible. Correct. Because the victims that are out there, they want to know that that person's being restrained. He, they want to know they're not back out on the streets uh, causing mm -hmm. harm. And they want retribution. They want people to pay for what they did. Yes. Not just forgiveness. Not mm -hmm. just, okay, don't let it happen again. Mm -hmm. We do that because the most power that we have as uh, law enforcement officers is discretion. Yes. We decide if that person gets a ticket or not. We mm -hmm. decide if it was a real accident or Who, not. Who's at fault? Yeah. We just don't walk around all day, hey, you got your hands in your pocket, military term. You're not yeah. wearing your headgear properly. We could do that all day. But mm -hmm. if the person uh, was tired, went to the hospital, and from the hospital, he didn't know the medicine made him sleepy and he got an accident, mm -hmm. we're not going to put him in jail for 10 years. We're mm -hmm. going to look at the cases differently. And that's what the judges do. And that's what law enforcement does too. We're just not out there to make life miserable. Yes, I, I agree with you. And uh, people need to know that. That you're not out there just to make their lives miserable because you're giving them a ticket for speeding or for not wearing a seatbelt or having their baby stick out of the window while they're driving. You know, it's to make it safe. It's to make it safe, not only for them, but for everyone else. Yes. So law and order, that's, uh, that's, uh, I think that is one of those uh, gifts and one of those expertise that I think you are meant to be here for. And uh, I... I really truly believe that uh, when you were asked and you were willing and you said yes, that's a huge gift to us. You know, many people might complain. You know, you're, you're never, any place you go, you'll always have the uh, complainers, people who, you know, seek to discredit you. But what matters is when we see your work in action. And I've seen your work in action and I hear from your team and especially the people who do the work. And so I'm really uh, happy that you're, you're willing to continue to be here and to help us out, improve these programs with the Bureau of Public Safety. And, yeah. and I, I do think that um, the distractions are a distraction. And I think if maybe the public or maybe the media, if you really want to know, look at the fruits of the labor. I mean, see the changes that have changed since uh, Director Carey's been here, maybe examine them, see where we were before. Improvements have been made, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that maybe, regardless of the distractions, people would focus more on the fruits of the labor. I did mm -hmm. it in How has it been? You know what I mean? And I think when you examine the fruits, you'll notice there's been small incremental changes, and it's headed the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's, it's, 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 thank you for inviting the director mm -hmm. here and really having him share some of those. Yeah, thank you. You've only had three day offs. Mm -hmm. I would say, he deserves at least, you know, one day to go fishing with you guys, you know, and not have to like be uh, 
just thinking of only work. You know, I think the few months you've been here, all I've heard is really progress in this uh, Bureau you. of Public Safety. So thank you for that. Thanks. So I'm going to just translate what uh, that said, yeah. you know, a little bit because other other plus director Kerry Levit mang akmal lobo pasel lo lokoringia omda sulwa sing au era ti to reng sa kukti el du lo lo monda ya ka dubai mo me sai ke re de la urere la at makmal me arungu ko lo sing gilengeng kal director levit me bangeter el altu tau e ru ko ai sel kire la ye re de la urere lengkam asang ra bekel time mang akmal me ring schedule ring le mal asang ra every day mal masa bak mal dire ga lorang asulel oya ul di black aktim le insist oya we need to talk to him we need to talk to him then uh, i know you're very busy so what i've explained to people is it was not easy to get an interview with you or a conversation with you because since you uh, <laughs> came to Palau, you came and you just started working. Mm -hmm. So you've been really, really busy all the time. So I'm encouraging everyone, instead of just listening to uh, conversations that may not be true assumptions, then to see the fruits of your work, to see the actual fruits of your actual work, like uh, Das has shared. He works closely with you, so he actually mm -hmm. sees the every day. And I'm very grateful that you took time you. and to share with me. Sharing with me is sharing with the rest of Palau. And that I, I really thank you for. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So at this point, I'm going to give you the floor for closing remarks. What would you like to leave our audience with? The people of Palau, not only inside, but also outside. Some, something that you'd like to leave them with as we close the show. It's up to you. There's uh, everything I've discovered since I've been here, corruption, nepotism, people breaking a law. It's because other people aren't turning in other people. I realize this is a small country. It's about the size of a military base that I'm used to. But now that I see all the relationships and the oi, we already know, I would say, well, what are you going to do about it? So if someone's not enforcing the law as they should and not reporting that person, you're just hurting each other. So please, if you see something wrong, file a complaint, make the report. Take notes, hold people accountable just like I do. But thank you. Thank you so much. Director Kerry Levitt, yeah, again, I thank you and Omdas for making time to come here. And uh, here's my last words as we close the show today. I see this man as an example of um, work ethic, transparency, accountability, and I appreciate the fact that he is willing to live in our small community here in Palau and to help this country move forward in a transparent and uh, holistic way. And the way that you uh, are running the Bureau of Public Safety. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. And thank you for being with us today on Do Taut Doing business in Palau. Until next time.